Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is Thinking in Structure and Function, Level 1, Structure and Function. After watching this video, you should be able to identify structure and function in objects like this lag bolt, or in living objects like the beak of a pelican. I'm going to show you my thinking around structure and function with a fork, and then you're going to have the chance to do the same thing with a wool mitten. Uh, first thing you always want to do before you get to structure and function is to identify the system that you're going to investigate. But structure and function will always go together. Structure is simply how something looks or how is it made, and then the function is what, is that, what does it do? And so the object that represents structure and function are these two blocks. And the reason why is you should think of them like an analogy for how structure fits with function or how function depends on the structure. But they're also three-dimensional objects, so you should be looking at not only how is it shaped, but how is it made? What is in here, what is, what is the internal structure that allows it to connect together like that? So I'm going to clear this off and then show you my thinking around structure and function in a fork. So the first thing you should always do when you're trying to study something new is identify what's the system you're going to investigate. So the system is going to be the fork. The next thing we should do is we should use it. We should see, or at least investigate, how this works. And so I can see I've used a fork before. So I'm holding it in my hand and it allows me to stab food. So I could stab a marshmallow and then it would allow me to deliver this marshmallow into my mouth so I could grab another marshmallow. So really what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get a better sense of what is the overall function of the object. And so at this point, I would say the overall function of the fork is for... So the overall function is for food capture. So I can capture it by stabbing the food and then I can deliver it to my mouth. So that's the overall function. But now we're going to start thinking about the individual structures that make up the fork because it's not just one structure. So the first thing you really want to start thinking about is how is it shaped? What are the shapes that I notice on the fork? So let me write down a couple of shapes that I notice. So two big structures that I notice are the four sharp tines. So those are pointed at the end. You can see those four sharp tines up here. And then this blunt kind of rectangular end. Those are the two structures or the shapes that I see. The next thing I should start thinking about is how is it made and is it stable or not? Certain things that we use are not stable, like my shirt is not stable. It's very flexible, but this has a different amount of stability. So let me write those two down. So two additional structures that I notice is that it's made of metal and the other is that it has a real rigid design. I can't even bend it if I try to. And so these are going to be some of the structures. I always start by thinking about how is it shaped and then how is it made? What does it look like and then how is it made? So now let me start thinking across and individually what are each of these structures giving us when it comes to a function? And let me write some of those down. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm going across and I'm identifying what is the structure and then what is its function. In other words, we've got the four sharp tines on the fork. So what do they do? Those are really designed to provide food capture. So there's a relationship between the two. And now let me do the rest. Let me show you how the structure determines the function.
So you can see that the blunt rectangular end provides for hand delivery. It's a place where I can hold on with my hand and I can move the food back and forth. I think the reason they make it out of metal is it makes it reusable. I don't have to throw it away each time. And then the rigid design allows you to lift heavy food. So you can see that we've identified the structure. We've then identified the function. But what I'm trying to do in the middle is identify what are those relationships between the structure and the function. And think of it as just reading like a sentence. Four sharp tines provide for food capture. It really identifies what the relationship is. So that is structure and function around a fork. I'm going to clean this off and then I'm going to give you a chance to do the same thing with a wool mitten. Okay, now that you've seen me show my thinking around structure and function with a fork, I'd like you to do the same thing using this wool mitten. So let me define the system. So the system is the wool mitten. The first thing you want to think about is what is the overall function and then start going through the different structures. How is it made? What does it look like? And then the individual functions. You could show me your thinking using the thinking slides that are down below. Uh, pause the video and then go do that and then come back and let's see how our thinking matches up. Okay, so the first thing I would do is I would play with the mitten. I would put it on and start to feel like, what does this allow me to do? The first thing I'm starting to notice is that my hand is getting warm, but also I can pick things up. So it allows me to not only move around, uh, but it also keeps my hand warm when it'd be really, really cold. So the first thing I would do is write the overall function. So the overall function is it gives my hand warmth and also it gives my hand the ability to move and to grab onto things. The next thing I would do is start thinking through all of these structures. What are the individual structures? Not only what does it look like, but how is it made? And I'm going to list those here on the left side. Okay, so the couple, first couple of things I notice about the structure is that it has this large oval pouch. So you can put your hand in it, and then it has a small oval pouch that's connected to that. It's made out of wool. So now I'm starting to think about how is it made, and then it's going to be a flexible material. So this is me thinking about what is it shaped like, and then how is it made. The next thing I'll do is I'll start going through and figuring out what are the functions that match up with each of those structures. Okay, so the function that matches up with the large oval pouch is it allows my fingers to move in a mitten, whereas the small oval pouch is designed for my thumb to move. The wool gives me warmth and the flexibility allows my whole hand to move. And so the next thing I would do is just show the relationships between those. Okay, so the large oval pouch provides finger movement. The small oval pouch provides thumb movement. The wool gives hand warmth, and then the flexible material allows, I could put an arrow in here, hand movement. And so what I've shown here is how the structures, in other words, what it looks like and how is it's made, relates to the function. So that's my thinking around the wool mitten. I'd like to have you now try to do the same thing using the thinking slides below, using a lag bolt, and then start thinking about the same thing using this weird uh, beak of a pelican. So that structure and function, it really is, they go together where the structure determines the function and the function depends on the structure, um, but it really requires you digging in a little bit and looking more carefully at the system itself. That's structure and function level one, and I hope that's helpful.